Hello, everybody. So we're going to get started. We, uh, we have uh, Kaufman NG here from uh, Confluent, who will talk to us about uh, deploying Kafka on DCOS. Hi, um, I'm Kaufman. And uh, so, so what we're going to talk about is basically, um, oops, basically the uh, kind of what, how, like the gotchas, how effective, how to effectively deploy Kafka on DCOS. So with DCOS, right, everyone knows there's comes with like a lot of uni uh, you know, a universe of packages, right? So, but there's like some nuances you might want to kind of watch out for. So the target audience is mostly for the, um, for the ops guys, administrators, whoever administering your DCOS clusters. So about myself, oh, this is the agenda. Um, about myself, I'm a solutions architect from uh, Confluent. So, and previously, I've been in the company for over one year now, and previously I was, uh, I was at Cloudera doing similar role, and I've contributed um, things, patches, fixes, here and there, to mostly to Kafka and Parquet. So about company, uh, just one slide, pretty short. So basically, uh, the company is exactly three years old, um, so it's founded by um, the creators of Kafka. So there are three founders, uh, Jay Neha and June. They are the original um, inventors of Kafka, and they came out. They came out as a LinkedIn engineers, and and currently they, uh, we have about like hundred something people now, hundred forty ish people, and with a good portion of them are engineers and. We think we are the largest um, contributor to uh, Kafka, to the Apache Kafka project. So below, down below, basically those are the um, VC firms uh, backing us. So what's the relationship of um, com the Confluent platform, which is our, our product, versus Apache Kafka. So you can see kind of, um, so basically we, we are building uh, the enterprise offering on top of the open source project. And you can see the core, um, the core Kafka logo here is the open source component. And then what the Confluent platform is, it, it, it's being offered in two versions. One is the, the, uh, the community or the open source version. So which is what you see in the blue circle there. Uh, it comes with a, a bunch of add-ons, um, connectors for Kafka Connect, um, some schema registry things for uh, looking up the schemas and other things, and other non-Java clients to Kafka. And then on top of that, we have the enterprise version, which is, uh, what, which is our commercial offering. And from that, we provide um, our control center, which is our management tool, um, some operational uh, tools as well. Anyone familiar with, anyone not familiar with Apache Kafka? Oh, okay, so everyone knows. So I can kind of fly by this very quickly. So basically, um, Kafka is basically a, a, a pub sub paradigm uh, distributed message, uh, message bus. And a lot of people kind of think about it as like a message queue, JMS, MQ, and the like. And it's, the main kind of uh, distinguishing feature of Kafka is it is highly fault tolerant, is highly performant. Um, it also allows uh, stream processing. I'm going to talk about what it means in a bit. So I'm going to fly by this slide since you guys know Kafka already. So um, yeah, so basically, to interact with Kafka, you basically need um, uh, two two types of clients. So one is the producer, one is the consumer, and the names are obvious. So one is basically for writing out messages to Kafka. Kafka is in the middle one here. And then, and to read messages, you need consumers. As simple as that. Kind of same as uh, a lot of the message queue um, systems. So why was Kafka invented? And at LinkedIn, a couple years ago, um, what, what they experienced was they have a number of systems. They need to have systems talking to each other. Um, so over time, 
you need to, in order to talk from system one to system two, you need to build custom integration points. And then it gets, you can see the, the, the diagram here, it gets messy, right? So that's why Kafka was invented as a centralized message bus, um, kind of acting as a, as a message hub for all the systems. And because it's centralized, you don't have get the, uh, you, you, don't, you don't get the duplication of messages, you get a consistent interface uh, to, a, to a centralized message, message bus. So a typical Kafka on the infrastructure side, a typical Kafka cluster consists of a couple of things here. So the broker is basically the, the main um, server component of Kafka. So basically, Kof broker is basically uh, stores your messages and also serves, serves your messages down to the client. And Zookeeper is basically used for um, coordination mechanism. So in, in a lot of distributed systems uh, like Hadoop and Kafka, they, they rely on Zookeeper as a coordination mechanism um, for functionality such as uh, leader election, um, finding out who the active guy is, um, there's a special role in the Kafka cluster called controller. So those kind of um, state management uh, functionality is handled by Zookeeper. So that's a requirement. And the, the, the next two things are, pretty, are more like optional things um, you can use with Kafka cluster. Uh, connect, connect is basically, basically like, a, uh, like a mechanism for importing data and exporting data to and from Kafka. And Kafka Streams is the streams processing framework. Um, when events come in to your message bus, if you want to do something with it, you can process it, aggregate it, um, run your business logic on top of it, and so on. So you would then use Kafka Streams to process your data in, while they are in Kafka. So on top of that, so the first four things here, you can see they are, the, um, the, uh, they are part of the Apache Kafka project. So the next couple of things is what Confluent Platform offers is um, the schema registry, which kind of provides you with uh, uh, like, a, like, a, like a registry of uh, uh, data, uh, data schemas. So uh, your, for, your, your message format, if you, if you enable with schema registry, schema registry will help you to make sure your data is consistent. Kind of like a database DDL uh, from a relational database tables. Okay, oops. For one sec, it lost the screen there. And then REST proxy is basically a RESTful, uh, simple lightweight RESTful server for, um, if you don't want to deal with the Kafka API, you could use the RESTful route to talk to Kafka that way. So basically, it provides you with the REST API to interact with Kafka. And you can do similar things as the normal Kafka clients. Uh, you can consume, you can produce. There's other tools in the Confluent platform, um, mostly in the enterprise features, enterprise edition of the platform. So why Kafka on DCOS? So as I mentioned, um, Kafka cluster consists of multiple components here. In order to provision, provision a new, a, a, a whole, a, well, fully working cluster, you probably need a couple machines. Uh, typical footprint would be at least like six machines and so on for the brokers, for the zookeeper, and for other things. So you need a management layer. Um, if you deploy on-prem, maybe that's not a big problem. A lot of people do it with um, DevOps tools, provisioning tools like uh, Chef, Puppet, Ansible, that can be done as well. Um, but what if I want to run some of the things as a lightweight containers, right? Um, I want to deploy this schema registry. I want to deploy Zookeeper as a, as a Docker container, for example, right? So you need a tool for actually managing all these, right? Um, and some of the things, some of the components in Kafka are stateful and some are stateless. And how do you manage them? Uh, we're going to talk about those nuances about how to how to deal with the stateful services in general, um, and also by provisioning Docker containers, right? You need service discovery and routing, addressing all the all these things, right? So DCOS naturally provides all of these for you. So if you look at the diagram here, basically this, these are the typical Kafka cluster components, and you can see from from, uh, 
from the icon here, you can see there's like a, I put it in a disk. So basically those things are the stateful services. They usually require the local um, storage. Um, so you can have multiple instances of these. For example, you can see we have now have three instances of Kafka brokers, three zookeepers, and multiple, three instances of Kafka streams and so on. So the other things down here, they are more, um, they're stateless. And they tend to be laid away. Oops. The connection is getting flaky, sorry. So if you look at what the, the actual states, what they store. So brokers, basically, uh, if, you go, uh, if you look at the top layer, it says Kafka Streams. So basically, Kafka Streams is the, what you built in your, uh, what you built your app, uh, Java applications in. So with Streams, it requires your local state store. I'm gonna talk about what it means later on. With Kafka Brokers, it stores data, it stores your messages. So it also needs its own um, storage for the messages, for the events coming in. And with Zookeeper, we all know that Zookeeper has its own local um, uh, storage as well, as well for transaction logs and uh, snapshots and so on. So these are, you look at these things here, there's at least three types of components that are, that are more stateful. So how do you manage all these? Um, and also to, with Kafka cluster, you typically, you would include you would put on other systems as well to talk to Kafka, right? You need your custom applications. You may have Connect. You may have uh, a, you may have a relational database that that that's piping data into Kafka. So, so there's a lot more things going on than just Kafka itself. And then you have to kind of address service discovery, um, where those where those containers are located, right? Um, addressing, right? Um, and load balancing as well. So where, where, do, where do we place these guys? So, you, so brokers are stateful, as I mentioned. So because they are stateful and, and, and they are relatively um, of a bigger, they usually have a bigger footprint. So we don't recommend them to be co-located so, meaning that you should never place two brokers on the same host or the same slave on DCOS. And because brokers also have dedicated disks, they should have dedicated disks. So, um, so what, that, what that means is when, you, when you're writing data to Kafka, eventually those data will be actually written to the disk, flushed, uh, flushed to disk. And when brokers start up, they need to be they need to read the data from disks as well. So uh, that's why they should be dedicated for performance reasons. And same for zookeepers. And should they be co-located? Probably not, because um, even though zookeepers are more lightweight mechanisms, um, brokers themselves are more um, heavier weight when it comes to memory, I.O. network. And Zookeeper is more like a I.O. sensitive uh, system, or network sensitive, rather. So um, if, we, if we put them together, you're likely to get into contention issues. And then you have to think about which container should I use, right, for each of these services. Could it, it typically, would, the most common option would be Docker. And with Mesos, Mesos also comes with its own uh, containerizer as well. So for, so with DCOS, it comes with a lot of like the niceties features built in. Um, you can easily configure your service, uh, your footprint, your system requirements and so on for the service. Um, and then you can actually also place these, cons what they call constraints, uh, meaning that you can place service, certain things of services on certain nodes, or maybe pin down to certain, certain nodes if needed. And it can handle, DCOS can handle stateful services. Uh, once they are pinned down, um, the services will stick on that note, uh, re regardless of how you restart it. 
So a typical clock, uh, Kafka cluster size, how many of them should I use? Typically, we recommend three brokers. Um, three is a good start because um, it doesn't, ha actually, it doesn't have to be three. Uh, it could be two. Uh, it doesn't have to be like an odd number even. Um, a lot of people use three because um, they like the replication factor to be three. Um, so what a replication factor is basically for every single message that puts into the topic, it will get replicated that number of times. And three times is usually good uh, for fault tolerance. And Kafka brokers themselves, they don't need a lot of memory. Um, they are like, they are Java processes, but they, unlike, unlike um, J2E applications, they don't need a lot of heap. Um, a lot of the memory requirements is actually off heap. So the JVM process itself is relatively small, uh, one to two gigs. Four or five gigs is probably on the high end, uh, but, but people have done it before. Um, and it's not a CPU heavy system either. So a few cores is okay. Um, it's not, um, it's multi-threaded, but it's not like very highly multi-threaded. So, um, so a relatively low, low number of cores is fine. And on the, on the DCOS side, typically on the marathon configuration, you would put something like this in order to, to do your placement constraints. So uh, you guys know what that means, that line here? Oops. So basically what that means is uh, I'm placing one max per host name. Uh, it's pretty, actually, it's pretty simple. Alternatively, um, in, the, in, the, in the DCOS service configuration, there's also something called placement strategy. So in this case, um, basically you're pinning down the placement onto a particular node. And you can combine these two together, by the way. So this is how the, uh, the broker service uh, config.json looks like in DCOS. So this is just a, sim just a, a sample of it. And so this thing we, got, we just talked about, max per node, you, you only place one per node, right? And the next thing is the de deploy strategy. So this is a DCOS thing, how, how you deploy uh, instances or tasks of the service. So remember we talked about Kafka Broker has, typically has three nodes or more, right? So this kind of controls how you deploy the individual, individual tasks, uh, one broker after another, serially. So you have to make sure this is in place. And we also talked about brokers should have dedicated disks. So what that means is um, if, you could, if you could, then you should explicitly put a mount, uh, put a volume, dedicated volume for the data, uh, for, the, for the broker data. So on the DCOS side, basically on the marathon config, you would do something like this. This type equals, this type is mount. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, so, um, so my, I kind of talked about before, Kafka messages, um, they are flushed. They are not immediately written. So the reason is, uh, actually, Kafka brokers actually caches the messages before it gets flushed. So that's how bro Kafka brokers achieve high performance. Um, so on the storage side, um, because they are delayed flush, flushes, we recommend, in general, hard drives are better than, H uh, than SSDs. So SSD is good for random writes, but for like a big data systems, um, usually standard hard drives is better. Oh. What about the broker nodes? Are those effective? Yeah, I'm talking about bro broker nodes here. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but that doesn't mean you don't, you can't have SSDs in combination, right? So a typical server node could have multiple disks. Uh, you could probably could have like a SSDs for your uh, boot volume, for example. And if you want to do, um, this is more, maybe, maybe, maybe not very commonly done in the DCOS world is on a lot of on-prem systems, like a standard on-prem um, on server-grade hardware, a lot of people do multiple disks 
on the server chassis, right? You can mount easily 12, 24 disks, right? So in that case, right, um, a lot for, for a lot of big data systems, you can set it up as a more like a JBot setup. So basically, what that means is those 12 disks would appear as this 12 disks, 12 individual individual disks. Um, or alternatively, you can do something like a RAID. You can put a RAID on it, uh, enable RAID 5, RAID 10. Then, then with the RAID volume, it's a, it's a gigantic virtual volume. Um, so there's a pros and cons on, on each one. Uh, usually, RAID is, RAID is better for Kafka. Um, there's a couple of reasons for it. Uh, so uh, one of the main reasons is uh, Kafka brokers themselves, they, ha they handle one single volume better than a JBot. So if you have multiple disks, then it's probably you, uh, you should use RAID. Mount, we saw before in the config. Um, so, root vo so basically, mount in DCOS means you are actually writing data in a dedicated volume, other than separate from the boot volume. So let's say I have um, in my cluster, in my DCOS cluster, I have, maybe, maybe I want to have dedicated disks, but I can't afford to have dedicated disks on all the slaves, right? I want, maybe I, I, I might have three powerful, three slave nodes that have, that have more capacity, right? So how do I pin them onto the slave nodes, onto those nodes, right? So you could do something like an explicit IP um, addressing. So in this case, you can put the placement constraints with the pipe, pipe delimited list like this. So this is the alternative to what we saw before earlier, uh, minutes ago. Um, so minutes ago, we saw the placement constraints would be maximum per, maximum one instance per host. And this is more explicit, this is more narrow, right? So DCOS, as we know, um, comes with Zookeeper already. DCOS comes with the exhibitor tool. It has the master node to use Zookeeper, right? Should we use that? And by default, so this is kind of the, this is, this is, our, uh, this is somewhat debatable in, in some, it depends on your use case. If you have a small cluster, maybe. If you have a large cluster, probably not. Um, and keep in mind, if you have other services that use, that also use uh, Zookeeper, you probably should not, should think about having a dedicated Zookeeper quorum. Um, as far as I know, for, for master, for the Mesos master, they already write a lot of uh, data to Zookeeper, right? So if you have multiple user, what they call user land applications that you also use Zookeeper, you should consider setting up your own dedicated Zookeeper. But for dev, dev environments, it's, this is probably okay. So next we're gonna talk about some, some of the uh, caveats, gotchas. Um, oops. So you can restart services, as we all know, with the DCOS uh, web UI. That's probably the easiest. Sorry, uh, this is flickering. So, but, and alternatively, you could also use the DCOS CLI. Um, what the CLI offers you today is the CLI can give you the fi more finer control of what to restart. So with brokers, it's a little bit more trickier because brokers, they appear as one service, but underlying, they are deployed as multiple instances, multiple tasks, right? And with Kafka broker, uh, we, with a distributed system like that, you should be, ca you should be cautious about um, restarting everything at once. Or right, 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 right at the, uh, or everything uh, after each other. So what we recommend people doing is when you do a, ro we should do a rolling restart. And also give some time between the rolling restarts of each in instances. Um, so right now we, we recommend people doing the, C uh, the CLI restart way. So with the CLI restarts, you can actually specify the broker ID to restart. With the, with the web UI, you can't. 
we're going to jump into some details about Kafka streams and other failures. Yeah, so this is what I just talked about. Um, no rolling restarts in the web UI, and then it's better to do the CLI restart like that. This is the example. Uh, the broker ID is usually it's pretty simple. It's, it starts from zero, one, two, and so on. And then you should also, also check the logs, of course. The reason why you want to check the logs here is even the broker has restarted successfully, um, it takes some time to catch up to the other remaining running instance. In the distributed systems, brokers have to uh, replicate uh, the data from the, uh, from the running instances. So that might take some time. Depends on how much data you have. So next thing we're going to talk about the, the gotchas on with Kafka streams. So it, this is kind of the high level of what Kafka streams uh, is. Basically, it's a it's a application custom built application using a library to talk to Kafka to do uh, event based processing. That's all it is. So um, so basically, your deployment from a deployment standpoint, you would be writing your own applications down here, down in the boxes there, and because the because with Kafka streams you're doing your own um, business logic calculations aggregations and so on. So usually uh, in the with the API itself it comes with states. Uh, the the way the way Kafka streams API keep, uh, keeps states is using something called state stores, which is an embedded database as you see in the orange thing is there. So. Let's say I have, a, I have an application, three instances, so each one has its own states. If one of them fails, what happens is Kafka Streams uh, will actually rebalance the workload. You see the, the red embedded state store got, got replicated over. Um, so this is, what, this is what built in in the Kafka Streams. If one, one of the instances dies, you get the you get the uh, low you get the uh, balancing of the workload onto the remaining instances. So with that said, right, this is stateful. This this is a stateful application, and in order to start the state, to recover the state from the instance three, onto the other instances, I need to catch up on the state, the red the red thingy there, right. So naturally, you can think, imagine, that might take some time. Um, I need to replicate a state from the Kafka brokers, actually, and repopulate, repopulate the state and start the new tasks and so on, right? So uh, I mentioned already, every, every Kafka Streams application has its own state store. Um, state stores have to be synchronized and assigned to their instances and that could take time. Depends on how much data you have, uh, how much aggregations you have. Um, depends on how long you've been running as well. So when they, when, when they are restarted, if they get restarted, they will be spawned on different nodes and they will be started from the empty state store, meaning that I have nothing to begin with, right? Then I need to populate the state. So there's um, some other types of gotchas um, to watch out for. So this is kind of the, the more like the failure. Um, in case of failures, how do you, how, what's the proper way to do it in DCOS? So normally with Marathon, right? Mar Marathon will restart, uh, restart the tasks on new node possibly uh, if they fail or if the health check fails, right? So oftentimes you see, you may see services being killed or and restarted somewhere else. So for, for stateful applications in general, uh, this is something that you may want to watch out for is, if it happens, maybe it's okay, but you, you, need, you need to watch out for whether these things are, um, are started properly and working properly. With Kafka Streams, uh, as I mentioned, you need to allocate more time. And administrators, someone should look into it. And also, um, what, what we recommend people doing is do alerting. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I mean alerting is use 
Pedro Dooley, Nagios, and the like. So these are kind of the, um, the, the information about the Kafka services. If we kind of drill down on one of these guys. Um, so, so, what, so Confluent and, let me give you a little bit of background here. So Confluent and Mesosphere are partners. So what we did was we kind of co-developed uh, some of the DCLS packages and with input from both side, both companies. And that gets deployed in as kind of the DC, into the DCOS universe. So the source of those packages are right here. They are all open source. So if you click on one of these guys here, um, you can see a typical DCOS package uh, deployment, uh, or definition, rather. So we can see the standard, oh, I need to create a skip screen here, sorry. I can't see my. Can you guys see it? Yeah, so this is no different from any other, most other DCOS services. You can see the same bunch of config, package, resource, JSON files. So here, if I go to, um, So this is actually the documentation about, about uh, the Confluent pa Kafka package. So um, recently, the, the version names may be a little bit um, complicated. So right now, the latest Confluent platform version is 3.3.0. Um, as you can see in the, 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 the later part of the num numbering schemes here, the first number is actually the kind of the framework version, the DCOS framework version. And also, uh, there's a couple other tools we recommend people doing, uh, installing. Um, so from Mesosphere, they come with, they offer the, uh, the Kafka client, Docker image. Um, so both, what that is, is basically um, a bunch of command line in the standard Apache Kafka with no services running. And there's also the Confluent Platform CLI. Um, so Confluent Platform basically is a, Confluent packaged version of Apache Kafka binaries. So it comes with the standard Apache uh, uh, Kafka uh, command line as, as well. And you can use any combination of tools if you like. So I'm gonna show um, what it looks like here. Can you see my screen okay? So here, um, I'm entering DCOS Confluent Kafka. So these are, it comes with a bunch of subcommands, and you can see, I, uh, yeah, we're not gonna go through that what, that, what those are, but most of them are kind of the, uh, uh, some of them are like administrative commands, some of them are for locking up things. Uh, you can see like you can restart things if you want, and you can look at the broker list, and I, ha I think I have a, I've configured to point to a running DCOS cluster. Let's see, yeah, so these, for example, this one gives you the auto broker, broker IDs. Um, and the, another simple command I can run here is topic list. Here you can see uh, these are the predefined uh, Kafka topics uh, on my DCOS cluster. So, if you depends on the tool sets. So the DCOS tool sets give you um, this CLI gives you this these output in a JSON-like format. And alternatively, you can do something like um, the standard Apache uh, uh, Kafka command line as well. For example, if I go to So now I'm on the, I'm on the uh, master node. So what I previously already have the Docker, the Kafka client Docker image installed, pulled down already. 
So on the master, I already have it. So I just simply run it. And inside the container, you get a bunch of commands like this. Um, so basically, I'm not gonna run them all. So basically, this list of commands is a standard uh, commands as in the Apache Kafka project. All right, I'm done here. Any questions? Right, right. It will get used to, it will get leverage. Um, so basically, um, the, if you're in the container, uh, you probably want, if, I, I talked about earlier is the JVM pro process itself doesn't occupy a lot of memory, right? I, I mentioned about one to two gigs, right? But, but you may want to allocate more free memory for the container, in this case, um, for the page cache. So this is how Kafka actually caches your data before it gets flushed to disk. So before they get flushed, the, the messages being freshly produced, they will be sitting on the page cache. And when consumers read from them, they are actually, Kafka brokers will serve them directly from the page cache, instead of copying, copying over to the JVM and then serve it out to the clients. So this is what they call the zero copy um, uh, mechanism. So the more page, page cache you have, the better in general. Um, depends on how much data, how much data volume. Um, it's very common, people have like maybe at least like 32 gigs. Yeah, questions? Oh, maybe give a chance to someone else. Oh, oh, sorry. Does the, the, the DCOS framework do a good job of keeping up with the current versions of Yeah, yeah, it does. Um, so in general, uh, I mentioned uh, Confluent and Mesosphere, we kind of have partnerships together, so we kind of worked make sure whatever our offering, our latest version of the Kafka uh, Confluent platform in particular, gets updated onto the DCOS universe. Um, so, yeah, so that the 3.3 3 version is what, what you see in the latest. Yeah, graceful is a little bit, um, somewhat of a, like, very loosely defined term. Because, um, because as I mentioned, uh, how long it takes actually varies. Depends on how much data you have and how, um, how behind you are on the brokers, too. So let's say my brokers was down for a day. I have one day's worth of data to catch up on. So that could be a lot. I don't know, depends on your use case. Um, so that's why we don't, we don't really have like, have a built-in wait for, wait for one minute or wait for one hour. Um, someone should actually monitor it. So for, so for now, restarting Kafka brokers is still somewhat manual. It involves human supervision. Yeah, so uh, the, the Mesos Kafka, I think, I think you're talking about these just without the Confluent prefix, right? Yeah. Yeah, those, those kinds. yeah so those are, those, as far as I know, is based on the standard Apache Kafka project. And so the difference is the Confluent platform versus the Apache Kafka um, uh, package. Um, so the, the, it's pretty, they are pretty compatible in general. Uh, the Confluent platform has has more tools built in, command line tools built in, and some enterprise features built in, as I mentioned. That's about it. One more question. Hmm? 
the broker replacement uh, elaborate? I think depending on the health check, uh, the broker may be automatically replaced instead of manually. Oh yeah, we recommend in general you should try to opt, uh, manual manual do a manually replace. Um, because if you use the amount of volume, as I recommend before, right, you, chances are you probably need to, uh, in the cloud environment, you may have to detach the EBS volume or something, right, and then reattach the volume to a new replacement. So right now, as far as I know, I, mean, I think you need to build it on your own. Um, even DCOS doesn't have the capability to do that for you, right? You, remounting a disk, this is something more on the AWS side of things. So. Um, yeah, I think you have to, administrators have to orchestrate that to, to make it happen. So it's still somewhat more manual. Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. <laughs>